Ladies and gentlemen, we could not have gotten to where we are today without the large intercessory prayer rallies. I thank God for Lou Engle. I thank God for the call because the seed was sown. The devil was defeated, the power. I had, like I was at that conference, they said, this is about territorial spirits. And I got up and I said, I'm confused. I don't know how you're talking about territorial spirits when you all are, are the territorial spirits. You guard your members with, with fierce gang-like qualities. Now comes the moment that Paul meant Luke, and the devil dreaded it. The devil is dreading this morning. He hates it. He fears it. Because once, for once and for all, the need for a convenient church goes away in the face of an exciting church. Now, the idea that I have to have the best seat is irrelevant because we believe God is all over the room. You can't have a bad seat where Jesus is. Now, they, 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 and them became we. And it was vision for lost souls that unified them. Now, it says we concluded that God had sent us over there. And Paul and Luke meet. Then they get in a boat. It says in verse 10, now when they had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Verse 11, therefore sailing from Tros, we ran a straight course to Samothrace and the next day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi. The boat trip from Tros to Samothrace is two days. Every time you take that trip, it's two days. Excuse me, from Samothrace to Neapolis, two days. Two days. They got there in one day. So here's what happened. Once they and them becomes we, the wind of the Spirit gets in your sails. I'm going to try it again. I worked on that all morning in front of a mirror. When they and them becomes we, you sail before the wind of the Holy Spirit. Anybody here? Anybody feeling what I'm saying? Once again, a modern narrative would have highlighted that. We got there in half the time because of the, a sea zephyr, a sea wind that occasionally went up on the Mediterranean Sea. That's how they did it. But it was God. This is when the vision of where you think your church will be in five years could happen next month. This is when suddenly people that are hoarding money, that are billionaires, suddenly release it because they finally found a project that they think is pure and right. This is the moment, the moment. Now listen, tonight, I promise you, you need to look at me right now. I promise you that those of you that have never seen a healing miracle in your life, you're gonna see one. You're not gonna talk to me about Amy McPherson and William Branham and Catherine Kuhlman or Oral Roberts. Because that God, that was the question that Elisha asked the followers of Elijah. Where is the God of Elijah? In this tent tonight is the next level of signs and wonders, not because of Mario, but because we and us has replaced they and them. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. I mean it. Glory to God. Everybody stand to your feet and give God a shout right now. Thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for what you've done in this tent today. Thank you, Lord. I believe that we should not be frightened when wheelchairs are empty, blind eyes are open, and the supernatural power of God is witness. Shouldn't be afraid. It's going to happen. But before I finish, because I'm a soul winner, I always have to give an altar call. I've done it at pastor's donut clutches. So I'll do it here. But in all honesty and humility, I'm going to tell you that the secret to the next four nights is you bringing someone. We can make the world's greatest TV commercial, and we haven't threatened that record in any way, believe me. We can make the world's best radio commercial, and we haven't come close. But it wouldn't matter. You are the living version of Mark chapter 6, verse 56. It said they recognized him, they ran, and began to carry others to wherever they heard he was. This is holy ground. I want you to realize that what you're going to witness tonight is the first crusade service in the long journey of this tent across America. This tent is going to go from here to somewhere I can't even tell you yet. But when I do, I think you're going to explode. But this is the beginning. You're the army. And you're going to be shocked who wants to come when you invite them. I want you to bring someone tonight. I can get more chairs. Yes, we can. To God be the glory. I promise you this. That in a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand in this tent. The first altar call ever given in this new tent. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. And I'm going to tell you where you're standing that God is going to help you. You're going to be able to say what the psalmist said. This poor man cried to the Lord. And the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his troubles. I want you to understand that some of you have made the mistake of dabbling with Christianity. You're dabbling with the Bible. You're dabbling with going to church. And you're wondering why all of these promised transformations in me have never come to pass. I'm still lonely. I'm still depressed. I'm still confused. And you can blame it on the modern version. You can blame it on the commercialized, deluded version. That didn't tell you that the active ingredient, the catalyst to the joy of the Lord is repentance. True, sincere sorrow for your sin. True, honest belief. That you have no other solution but God. I have nowhere else to turn. I know that I need Him. And if you'll say honestly to God, today I want to turn from my way to your way. And I want to be cured of the curse that the human race has. And be set free by Christ once and for all. I want a new life. I want to... Be cleansed, get right with God, and watch the power of that new life in all my circumstances, in my feelings, and in my mind. I want that. That's what I want. Mario, would you pray for me that I will have that new life right now? If that's you, let me see your hand wherever you are. You know, the devil may tell you that you're one rare bird that you're a lonely hand. If you put your hand up, you'll be the only one. But the hands are everywhere. There's hands in every section of this tent. So if you're waiting, remember this. Remember how many times you came close to making a powerful and positive change of direction in your life only to fall back 
into old ways and old patterns. This is the day you keep the biggest promise of your life. I'm going to go with God. Full bore, all the way, that's it. Now I'm not asking for people to rededicate their life. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I've got to have a new life. I'm starting from scratch right now. The foot of the cross, Jesus is going to be my Savior and my Lord. That doesn't happen in the layaway plan. It happens as one package, Lord and Savior. Put your hand up right now. Now, everyone with your hands raised, get out of your seat. Walk down here to the front. First altar call in this tent. Come from wherever you are. Come right now. Come right here. If you raise your hand, you come. Whenever you see this, you only give God the glory. You don't give any man credit. We thank you, Lord.